So I finally managed to get myself an official Raspberry Pi M.2 hat plus for the Raspberry Pi 5. So let's check it out. Now by far this is probably one of the best upgrade attachments you can get for your Raspberry Pi 5 because we finally have some sort of stable storage. Now for the Raspberry Pi our main sources of storage was either the SD card or a USB flash drive or a SSD. Both of which is okay but not reliable. For SD card sake you really shouldn't be using that as an operating system because it will destroy the disk probably within a year if you use it a lot. It's not meant for a ton of read and writes. Now we do have the other option of booting through USB either through a flash or SSD but again it makes the Raspberry Pi bulky and unstable due to the fact that it's possible that you could just accidentally disconnect the cable or the hard drive doesn't stay connected. There's just so many things that can go wrong in this configuration. You are still using a USB connection so the speeds are limited through that connection speed. But with that being said we now have the M.2 hat that actually gives us an NVMe slot for stable storage. So let's check it out. We're booted into our Raspberry Pi through SD card and I do have all the connections in. So I do have SSD USB installed and I also have the NVMe installed. So to begin what I'm going to do is let's see if I can increase this so it's a lot easier to see and I am going to run a sudo hd param dash t to our MMC the SD card and the results on this should be very slow actually. Okay, so we get about 86 megs per second. There are ways to actually increase the SD card speed by a little. You could probably bump this up to almost 100 megabytes or 90 megabytes per second, depending on your SD card. But yeah, 86 megs per second, which in our case, to be honest, is not that fast. The other configuration that we have is our USB SSD. So let's take a look at if I run HD Palm on that, slash dev slash uh, what is this? SDA, I believe. Yeah, SDA. And this should have at least, I say 200 megs, maybe 300, I don't remember. But let's see, it's 275 megs, which is crazy because it's double or almost three times the speed of what you're getting from the SD card, which is really good. And that's how I've always been running my Raspberry Pi 5s, just using the USB SSD because of this increased transfer speed. Now, we're gonna test this on the NVMe. So we're gonna do sudo hd palm dash t slash dev slash slash nvme n1 and the results for this is about 423 which is double the speed of your ssd usb and and four times the speed of your SD card. What's crazy is that this is still running in PCIe 2.0, which is what the Raspberry Pi is certified for. So if we go in and actually run sudo raspi config, I could actually go into, let me make this bigger. I could actually go into the advanced option, go into PCIe speed, and actually enable the PCIe Gen 3, which is not certified, but it does work. So I'm gonna hit yes on this enable that, finish, and we are going to reboot the Raspberry Pi from the SD card and retest the connection speed again with the PCIe 3. And now we're going to do sudo hd pram slash dev slash nvme n1 slash t. I was, and there we have it, about 714 megs per second which is double the speed of what we just had previously on the PCIe 2. Now I'm gonna put up a chart and show you all the different numbers between the SD card and SSD and the NVMe. And you can see it's a huge jump and this is reliable storage. Like it's not gonna disconnect and it's not bulky like you have the USB SSDs. What's also crazy is because we have the M.2 slot now, we could actually add different type of boards. Now I know Raspberry Pi just came out with an AI board that you could actually install on this and use AI, but you could also add other cards. Like if you wanna expand your SATA, you can actually just add a SATA card to this and add additional storage. If you wanna turn your Raspberry Pi into an official NAS or a few other things that you could put in. You could even put in a, a slot for a full-size PCIe slot. Now to get the NVMe running, so you could actually boot off it, you will actually need to use the 
Raspberry Pi imager and you would choose your storage to the NVMe. So in my case, it's actually this one right here, Fison. 512, I'm gonna choose the device, it's gonna be a Raspberry Pi 5, choose the OS, 64-bit, and it's gonna be the desktop, hit next, and then you could just continue, are you sure you wanna continue? Yes. Formatting the NVMe through the Raspberry Pi imager using your SD card. Now, there are a couple of methods to get it to boot. So, in my case, I'm gonna make this a little bit larger. You could do sudo raspi config. And in the advanced option, there are boot orders. Now I like to keep it in SD card boot just because the SD card will always boot before the NVMe and then it'll try the USB. That's only if something happens to NVMe or if you want to reformat this again, you could just slap in the SD card and it'll work perfectly fine. Now I did try the NVMe boot, which is great because it will boot directly from your NVMe first before the USB and then the SD card. But the problem with this is if I want to reformat my NVMe, there's no way to do it unless I boot it off something else, undo this option to B1 again, and then boot from SD card and have the NVMe installed and then attached. So I personally like to keep the SD card like this and then just unplug the SD card to have it boot from the NVMe. So let me go to finish because I think it should be done writing by now. Oh, it's pretty quick, yeah. Well, I still have to download the OS. And there we go, we're gonna verify the NVMe. So let's do a quick test. So right now I have this on my SD card. I'm gonna wait until this finish. And it's gonna be done with that. I also have a Raspberry Pi, a fresh install on my SD card, I mean SSD. So what I'm gonna do right now is, right now it's, I'm hoping, let's see, H top average, Okay, it's not running anything. The CPU is low, that's fine. I'm gonna quit out of this, close that, and I am actually gonna do this in post, so I'm not gonna be able to count it, but I'm gonna show you how fast it will just load the browser. So I'm gonna open up the browser. And there we have it. This is using the SD card, and I'm not gonna load into any website. I'm just gonna let this load like that. So it took like an average of at least four seconds or five seconds to boot into Firefox with SD card. So now what I'm gonna do next is actually boot up on the USB SSD and try the same test again. So let me close out of this. I'm gonna shut this down and then boot this into the SSD. All right, so here we have the operating system on the SSD, the USB SSD. And I am gonna increase the speed of this. I mean, increase the size of that. And do a H top real quick, just make sure the CPU average is low. I mean, technically it's not too bad. It's like one, 3%, the system's still booting up. So the uptime is about 40 something seconds. And now I'm gonna close this out and then open my browser. And then let's see how long it takes to load. Hmm, I couldn't really tell, but it seemed like it was about four or five seconds. I can't tell if this was longer or faster than the SD card to be honest. Very similar though. But yeah, now we have it loaded. And again, I'm gonna do the average in post. Now that we have the time frame for this, I am gonna go ahead and boot up the NVMe. So I'm gonna shut down here. All right, and there we have it. We're booted into our NVMe. And I know this is still running on PCIe 2.0. So let's try it on both ways. Let's pop up HTOP and see how it is. The load average is very low. And we've only been up time for about 28 seconds. I'm gonna close out of this and let's do a browser check. Oh, this is so much faster. That was not bad at all to boot this up. All right, so that was much quicker. I could even see it like maybe double the time of what the SSD and definitely way faster than what the SD card had. So now what I'm gonna do is sudo raspi config jump into the advanced option and enable, okay. Since the option is not there, that means I have to update the operating system. So it's, I'm gonna do a sudo app update and sudo app grade. So my Raspberry Pi config will have the new option so I can set the speed. Technically, you could just manually write it into the boot config. All right, now that the system is updated, let's see if the Raspberry Pi config has that new option. There you go, PCIe speeds. And yes, I want to enable that and it's gonna ask me to reboot. So I'm gonna reboot anyway. The speeds of PCIe 3 running Raspberry Pi desktop is so impressive, it's so fast. Even the boot up shows. 
So I'm going to go H top, make this a little bit bigger, 19 seconds in, and we don't even have much CPU usage because it's fully booted. And I'm going to close this out and start the web browser again. And that is fast. That is definitely much faster, not much faster, but you could feel the difference that is faster than PCIe 2.0. But with that being the case, to be honest, I think with this configuration and the NVMe, it is highly possible to run the Raspberry Pi 5 as a full desktop if you have like Ubuntu installed or something like that. Because of the increased hard drive speeds, everything loads instantaneously, especially on the Raspberry Pi operating system. It's just made, well, this operating system was minimal and it was made for an SD card running at 80 megabytes per second. So running this at 700 megabytes per second for an NVMe is ridiculously fast. Anyway, I did try this on another operating system, which is Proxmox, which I'm gonna show you right now. All right, so here we have my Raspberry Pi 5 booted through the NVMe and I do have Proxmox installed. So if you're interested in that, I do have a video on how to install Proxmox onto our Raspberry Pis, but yes, it does work very well, especially in this configuration where you could actually install a lot of LXCs for your server. In my case, I actually installed Ubuntu 24 and I have as a VM. So I'm just gonna log in over here. And again, this is running Raspberry Pi and I am using ARM 64 version of Ubuntu. And the first thing I'm gonna do right over here is just to show you if I go into terminal and I do uh, sudo hd palm test dev sda, I believe. And in this case, because I'm running a VM and a raw disk image in this VM, you're going to see the result is about 498 megs per second. And I do have PCIe 3 running through Raspberry Pi NVMe. So I'm going to go back into the Raspberry Pi, go into shell, and I'm going to run uh, HD test dev NVMe N1, like that. And in this case, we're gonna be able to see that it's actually gonna be slightly faster, I believe, about 712. So yeah, even though I do have PCIe 3 enabled, it's not passing through to the VM, but the VM is still actually running so much faster than it would using SSD. So you are gaining a increased double, at least double amount of speed from SSD itself. And running the Raspberry Pi as like a little home lab, like a Proxmox with LXCs or VM containers, or even just running Raspberry Pi in a Docker configuration like Pi Hosted, you're gonna have a huge advantage from this hard drive speed. All in all, there's so much things you can do now that Raspberry Pi 5 opened this lane that you're actually able to use NVMEs or M.2 configurations or if you look at other manufacturers, they actually made PCIe 1X for the Raspberry Pi 5, which again, expands the functionality of what you can do with the Raspberry Pi 5 if you're using this more of a home lab situation than you are using this as a signage. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. I really do enjoy using this on the NVMe platform, which I think I'm going to stick to. If you have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.